Blog Talk Radio. You're listening to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio, broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Today's voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. When Christians Speak is dedicated to lifting up the name of Christ Jesus and spreading the good news. So it's my brother, can you spare a dime? My God shall supply my need. Don't have to beg because I am a seed. Because every good and All right, good, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome again to When Christian Speed Talk Radio broadcast. Today's broadcast, of course, is the second broadcast of Kingdom Principle with Pastor Cleophis Malone, Jr. This is um, broadcast number two. Amen. So we're excited about him and what God is, is doing and speaking through him today. Amen. We're not going to take a lot of time, but I just want to remind you that um, uh, Pastor Cleophis is on every uh, first Sunday of the month. In January, he'll be on the first Sunday of the month. Amen. So we are grateful uh, to him saying yes and being able to speak the word of God. So what we're going to do at this time, we're going to turn everything over to uh, Pastor Pastor Cleopas Malone, amen, and we're going to let him get started and bring forth the word and prayer and do whatever the Lord sees fit for him to do, amen. God bless you. Pastor Malone, please. Good evening. Thank you, Reverend Ray. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. I can hear you. Outstanding. Uh, good evening, everyone. I thank you for joining the broadcast. I'm going to open up in prayer, and I'm going to get right into the word this evening. Eternal God, our Father, we come before you this evening, Lord, just giving thanks unto you, Father, thanking you for this is indeed the day that you have made, and we choose to rejoice and be glad in it. Now, Father, I thank you for the word that you've given unto me to share with your people on this evening. I thank you that that word is anointed to heal, to deliver, and to set free. Now, I decrease so that the greater one in me may increase. Holy Spirit, have your way on this service this evening. Let your word go forth with power, with, with power, authority, and a spirit of excellence, Father, so that your people can receive the word, so that they can just be, so that they can be doers of the word and not hearers only, Father. And for this, we do give you all praise, all glory, and all honor. And it's in the name that's above every name, the name, Lord Jesus the Christ, in whom we love and whom we serve, and all that agree with that, say Amen. Um, <clears throat> I want to just pick up where I left off on last month. Uh, these uh, these series, these services, or these uh, uh, broadcasts uh, will be uh, a teaching ministry, and that's 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 what I've been uh, assigned to and called to do is is to teach um, the Word of God uh, in simplicity with understanding. And so on last month uh, we were talking about. Uh, <clears throat> obedience uh, You can never go wrong in it But the, the, the topic of this Of the message was Obedience to God will never cost you More than you will gain Obedience to God Will never cost you More than you will gain And we had three points Of scripture reference that we came from And this is sort of a recap uh, So that I can bring those that were not on up to where we are currently, and then we'll pick it up from there and we'll close this particular series out uh, on this evening. <clears throat> Amen. Um, so we we started out in, in Genesis chapter 12, uh, right at verse 1 uh, of Genesis 12 and 1. And here you'll see that uh, God had given Abraham a commandment and told him to get out of his father's house, get out of his country, uh, into a land that he would show him. And Abraham uh, took the word of God and he moved out and moved on. And, and and we determined that getting out of country was getting out of his place of comfort, getting out of his place of peace, 
uh, getting out of his will and into God's will. And that's so critical for us is, you know, you know God created us as free, free moral agents. We have our own will. Uh, he chose us. We didn't choose him. He chose us. But now when we set ourselves under his will and in his word, now we are to uh, step step down or reduce our will and submit to his will. Now we come under his guidance, his direction, uh, his purpose for our life. You know, he pre <laughs> he prearranged and preordained our purpose for our lives long before he ever created this universe. Uh, he had already prearranged each one of us, our, our, our destiny. And so it would behoove all of us to comply, to put our will subject to his will and let God lead us in the path that we would want to go in. And and you can see even in this with, with, with Abram, prior to him being called Abraham, uh, he was Abram at this time, and he submitted his will to God's will. He did exactly what God told him to do, and uh, and God promised him, gave him some promises <clears throat> that are even good for us today uh, about what he would do uh, when he submitted to his will. So Abram submitted to his will. Uh, we discovered that, uh, you know, get away from, that God wants us to, to get away from things that can be tempting to us, uh, temptation. Sometimes temptation comes in the form of, uh, of friends. Sometimes it comes in the form of a job. Sometimes it comes in the form of family, relatives, friends. Uh, you know, Jesus talked about, you know, if uh, <clears throat> anyone that wanted to come after him or, or wanted to be uh, his disciple would have to, uh, you know, this is a strong word. He didn't mean it this way, but this is a strong word. Would have to hate mother, would have to hate father, would have to hate brother, would have to hate sister, because you can't exalt anything or anyone above God. You have to put God up up number one, and that's where he wants to be, and he, and he will not. Let me say that again. He will not be number two in anybody's life. Uh, so you, you have to put God number one in order to see all of the promises of God come to fruition in your life. Uh, so he wants to get, get rid of those temptations, those things that, that, that can pull you away from him. Uh, so what we discovered, God wants to be number one in your life willingly. He wants to be number one in your life willingly. It's not, it's not something that's by force. You know, he wants to be, he wants, he wants it to be by your choice. You, know, you choose him, and you choose to make him number one in your life. He's not in any competition with, with anyone or anything. Uh, <clears throat> we we saw there in um, uh, uh, that God said, uh, or that is, I said that it, I have to be willing to in my I have to be willing in my heart to trust God, or I will not move from where I am. I have to be willing in my heart. The heart is the birthplace of all of your increase. If it's the birthplace of all of your increase, it can also be the birthplace of all of your decrease. So you have to be willing in your heart to make God number one. When you when you don't, when you don't, therefore you can become stuck with no hope of getting out of where you are. So then we moved over to First Kings. <clears throat> and we looked at uh, uh, the prophet Elijah as he be as he was obedient to the word of God in chapter 17 of First Kings. Uh, God told uh, told him to uh, go to this brook, and there was going to be a famine in the land. There was going to be no rain, uh, no dew, until the word was spoken. So. He goes to the brook. He does as he's instructed. He goes to the brook, and he tells him that that this is where he's going to get where he's going to get water from. Uh, and while he's at this brook getting water, because there's a famine, there's no food. He said he was going to have a raven to feed him, to sustain him. And this raven was going to bring him bread and and meat in the morning, <laughs> and then again in the evening. So he did 
what he was told to do. And the raven sustained him. The scripture goes on to say that that brook dried up, ran out of water because there was no rain. So that brook can only stay uh, filled with water as long as the elements of the, of the rain was falling to keep it up. When there was no rain over a period of time, the brook dried up. The out in heat and it keep just sustaining itself. We can't sustain. We can't sustain ourselves. You know, we need God. We need the breath of life in us through the spirit of the living God for us to be sustained. Amen. So he told him, he said, okay, I have already, see, God is in our tomorrow today. Let me say that again. God is already in our tomorrow today. He already knows everything that is and that will be. Already knows it. So if he already knows this, so he tells him, he says, get out of here, go to Zarephath. He says, I have a widow woman there that's going to help to sustain you. And he gets to Zarephath. He gets to the gate. He goes in, and sure enough, there's this widow woman. And she's gathered some sticks and some things, and uh, she, he he asked her to get him something to drink. Now, I, I found that to be quite interesting since there was a, you know, a drought, and the brook had dried up. And he leaves there, and the first thing he asks for when he gets to this widow woman is something to drink. And she complies. So she goes to get him something, going to get him something to drink. And while she's going to get him something to drink, he gives her a second commandment. He says, and bring me a piece of bread to eat. And that's when she spoke up. And she told him that she only had a little meal. And she, she was going to make this make this cake for her and her son to eat, and then they were going to die. She had already now. God has given her a word to sustain the man of God. She doesn't know that this is coming to pass right away. So now she's thinking, all right, we're down to our last supper. We're going to eat and we're going to die. And the man of God says to her, he says, even with that, make me a look, make me some first. Make me some first. You know, put God's business first. Make me some first. And she does. And it goes on to show, and it goes on to read on in there that uh her being obedient to what God had told her, him being obedient to what God had told him, it says her and her house and the man of God ate for many days. They didn't lack. In this famine, in this drought, they ate for many days. Then we went over to Second Chronicles, Second uh, Chronicles chapter 20. And I'm just bringing you up to speed from where we were last month so that I can get everybody caught up so we can keep diving into this, uh, this obedience and why obedience is so important uh, in the body of Christ. And with God. So in Second Chronicles, we, we get over to Second Chronicles, and you have Jehoshaphat. And he gets a message that three armies are coming for him. <laughs> not one, not two, but three. And an interesting thing happened with Jehoshaphat. He didn't go and get his army together. He didn't go running trying to get things in order to go into battle. The Bible says that Jehoshaphat prayed to God, and he put his whole house on a fast. Put the whole house on a fast. And they cried out to God. And then he started to remind God of who God was in his life, in the tribe of Judah. And the prophet came to him over there in, 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 in 20 and 15, and the prophet, prophet said unto him, and he said, Hearken, you all Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou king Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you, 
Be not afraid, nor be dismayed by reason of this great multitude. Don't 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 get don't get sideways, don't get twisted because of this large company of men coming after you. Don't be afraid or dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours but God's. The battle's not yours but God. See, we're we're fighting in situations that we that God never intended for us to fight in. That's part of that submission. If you want God to protect you, listen, there are some things that that that, that physically we have to do, but if we're not doing it in a spirit of submitting our will to God and getting instructions from God on what we should do, then God's not obligated to participate. We want him to, but if God's hand is on it, then why am I putting my hand on it? And if my hand is on it, God is God is not going to be in, in no confusion, no mess, nor is he the author of confusion. So I'm going to have to submit. I'm going to have to surrender my will to his. I'm going to have to trust him. And that's what Jehoshaphat did. Jehoshaphat and all his people. He gave them some instructions on what to do as if they were going into battle. And then he told them to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And it's amazing to me because you got three countries or three armies coming at him. And he had enough in him. Obviously, there had to be some experience there from some time ago or another episode where he had seen the hand of God move on his life. And we should be taking every experience that we have where we've seen the hand of God on our life and the hand of God move in our life and the miracles that have taken place in our life, and that should fortify our stance and our position with God and our ability to be able to trust God. Amen? So I brought you up to speed to where we were where we where we were last month. We talked about obedience to God's commandments will save save my life, save your life, and exalt God the Father. We saw that in, in first Kings. We talked about obedience to God's word will protect me against my enemies. We see that in Second Chronicles chapter twenty. We talked about this vertical relationship. You know, when 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 your when your vertical relationship with God is right, when this when this vertical relationship is right, this vertical relationship, uh, everybody knows what vertical is. Up. When, so when the vertical relationship is right, then the horizontal relationships got to line up. Got to. That's what he talks about in Proverbs sixteen and seven. We talked about that last week. When a man's ways please God. He'll make even his enemies to be at peace with him. That's the kind of peace that surpasses all understanding when this vertical relationship is right. And then we have to have a complete understanding of who we are and whose we are. You know, we, we say that cliche ish and we say that, yeah, I know who I am and I know whose I am. Okay, yeah, you you know you know that God is the creator, God created man. We know that, created us in his image and his likeness, but do you really know who you are. Do you really know who you are in God? You know, he in Jeremiah one, he says, I knew he says, before you were formed in your mama's womb, I knew you. And I predestined you. <laughs> and I ordained you. So you're here for a purpose. We are here for a purpose. We are here for God's purpose. We're in this space and time for God's purpose. I can remember listening to Dr. Martin Luther King and he uh I, wa- I want to say it was his uh I have a uh I've been to the mountaintop speech. And if you ever get a chance to listen to it, listen to it. He talks about in there the different time periods in in history that if he had an opportunity to be in that time period of that history, you know, he would not have taken that over the time period that God put him in. He was purpose for the time that he was that he was put in. 
We are purposeful the time that God has put us in. We are divinely purposed for the time that God has put us in. That's why it's so critical for us to understand this 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 obedience piece. Because this obedience piece, when I'm obedient to the word of God, when I'm obedient to what God has called me to do, when I'm obedient to his will, now my life lines up with his with his word. And that's what I want. I want to be in divine alignment with the word of God. I want to be in divine alignment with the will of God for my life. When we're in divine alignment with the will of God for our lives, we see miracles, signs, and wonders happening in our lives all the time. This doesn't mean that we're not going to go through some challenges or, or have some challenges, might even have some setbacks, might even have some difficult times, might even have some, some sick, sickness and disease that come up in our lives. But that's not of God. Jesus said this. He, he said that the thief, the enemy, comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He says, but I've come that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. So we got we to gotta put things in the proper perspective to know, okay, if God is for me, this is what the scripture says, if God is for me, then who can be against me? He said, and Isaiah said this, Isaiah says, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. He didn't say the weapon wouldn't be formed. He didn't say that you wouldn't have challenges. He said, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. The weapon might have been formed. The enemy, as a roaring lion, goes through the land seeking through whom he can destroy. So consequently, some weapons are going to be formed. Some challenges are going to come up in our lives. But when we have placed ourselves in the word of God, we're studying the word of God for ourselves to know the word of God for ourselves so that we can be that light that's set up upon the hill. Now the obedience piece moves into that faith thing. Now we can see the power of God working in our lives. Consequently, now no weapon formed against me shall prosper. John 16, 33, Jesus said this. Jesus said that in this life that we would have some tests, some trials, some tribulations, but he said, be of good cheer. Why? Because Jesus has overcome them all. He's overcome the world. He's overcome all this other stuff. When he died, when he died on the cross at Calvary, everything that God sent him to the earth to do was accomplished when he said it is finished everything was accomplished healing was accomplished deliverance was accomplished your peace that that surpasses all understanding was accomplished salvation was accomplished everything that he was sent to do was accomplished now how do we activate it we activate it through operating in the word of God, the way he's designed it to be operated in, with faith. That moves us in, 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 into, into our, our lesson for tonight, to, in this continuous of this lesson. You know, I, I heard uh, over, right after that, our last meeting back in November, I heard this phrase from my pastor. He said, H2O, and we all know what H2O is. It's the formula for water. <laughs> right, H2O. But then he broke it down. He put it in a, in a more spiritual meaning, and H2O is hearing to obey, hearing to obey. See, I'm listening to God for instructions, and then once I get the instructions, the power is on when I obey the instructions. We often hear people say knowledge is power. And that's a true statement. But knowledge alone does not produce power. I can go to school and get all of these different accomplishments and, and, and different degrees. I can have more degrees than a thermometer. But if I never take the information that I've been given and then apply it and use it, it will have no benefit in my life. Me just knowing it doesn't benefit me. It's the application of what I know 
that brings the power. God over there, and uh, I believe it's Hosea, told him that, you know, uh, my people perish for lack of knowledge. And he was talking to the priest. The priest had some knowledge that God had instilled into them, but they wasn't passing that knowledge along to the people. Consequently, if the knowledge wasn't being passed along to the people so they could even apply the information, the knowledge that they were given, that's why they were perishing. And so we, we have to take the information that, 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 that is in Scripture, the knowledge from the Word of God, the wisdom from the Word of God, and now we have to apply that to our lives. My goal in life should be to fulfill the will of God that he predestined for my life from the very beginning. That should be my goal. And a lot of believers, we've made heaven our goal, and God never wanted us to make heaven our goal. Yes, we ought to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of our lives. Yes, we want salvation. We want eternal life. But if that was the only purpose for it, then the moment that we received Jesus Christ and Lord and the Savior of our lives, then we should have dropped dead and went to heaven. If heaven is the goal. But heaven's not the goal. God wants you saved. God wants you filled with the Holy Spirit. God wants you filled so that he can depart some things into you so that you can now take that information and share it with others so that they could come into the knowledge of Jesus Christ as the, the son of the living God, so that they can be saved. Now they can have some people that they can go share it with because me by myself can't touch everybody. That's why if you, from the last uh, lesson, I told everyone, I said, plumbers use pipes, electricians use wire, God uses people. See, when God... God locked himself out of the earth realm. God's not coming down to the earth realm to do anything. Everything that's accomplished in the earth realm, he does it through a man. When he wanted you to get Jesus into the earth realm, he had to have a body. Consequently, he tapped the virgin, the virgin Mary, and she agreed. Be it unto me, Lord, at your will. She agreed. Now, we're in the earth realm. We're here, born of a woman, the same way Jesus got into the earth realm. And so here's what we have to do. Now, we have to take our will and put it under his will and say, be it unto me, Lord, at your will it be done. Now, I can go out, you can go out, and you can share this gospel with others so that they can come into the knowledge now, their lives can be increased and grow and better. Now, people can see our lives as they're growing and as they're getting better and the miracles and wonders and signs and wonders that are happening with us, the, the peace that we walk in, the joy that we walk in. There's people out there that look like they have it all together. They look like they have everything that you would want or need, but they're missing something. That's what that rich, rich one, young ruler was missing when he came to Jesus and said, what must I do to have eternal life? And Jesus told him, you know, honor your mother, honor your father. You do this, this. And he said, yeah, I've done all that. <laughs> and he, but there was one thing standing in the way. <laughs> he had all of, this, all of this wealth. His wealth was where he put his trust. How do we know this? Jesus said, go sell all that you have and give it to the poor. And the Bible said that he was grieved greatly because he had put all his trust in his wealth. Remember I said, God wants to be number one. He never told us that we couldn't have things. Never told us that. As a matter of fact, the Bible says this. No good thing will God withhold from you and I. So consequently, if he's not holding any good things from us, there must be some bad things that he don't want us to have, to have in our lives. See, everything that looked good ain't good. 
So we got to make a choice. Amen. My peace is non-negotiable. My joy is non-negotiable. My love is non-negotiable. Well, how can you say that, Pastor Malone? I can say that because I put all of that into, into God's hand. I submit myself to his will. I submit myself to his way. Now, me submitting myself to his will and his way does not take away the opportunity for some challenges to come up, but because I know who I am and I know whose I am, even when the challenges come up, I can still say this is the day that God has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. I'm now dictating to my situation and my circumstance, and my circumstances and my situations are not dictating to me. Too often I see I see people, believers, non-believers, and everything that's going on in their in their life has totally engulfed them. They're at the mercy of whatever is going on in their lives, and God didn't create us to be that way. He created, he created us to be dominant, to win in every situation in our lives. We are the blood-bought, blood-washed, children of the Most High God. We've been called out of darkness and placed into his marvelous light. We're fearfully and wonderfully made. We're the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. We are the lenders and not the borrowers. So if I know that's who I am, and I'm operating in who I am, then why does these challenges that come up bend me out of shape, get me talking defeated? I don't talk defeated. I talk in victory because I walk in victory. And why do I walk in victory? Because Jesus overcame the world. And because he overcame, that makes me an overcomer. Amen? Amen. <laughs> I love it. I'm having fun all by myself. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Watch this. Obedience must have faith to believe that which it cannot see. I hope you got a pen or pad or something. You might want to write these things down. You might want to write some of this stuff down. Obedience must have faith to believe that which it cannot see. If I'm going to be obedient to something or someone, I obviously obviously must know something that they have a good track record. If I'm going to be obedient, when I was if I was going to be obedient to my parents and when the track record, they have set some standards and they've set a track record that I can hang my hat on. I can remember growing up as a young kid before I ever had my driver's license. My dad told me, when you get your driver's license, son, I'm going to get you a car. When you're old enough to drive, I'm going to get you your own car. And he only had to tell me that one time because everything that he told me before he ever told me that, every birthday, every Christmas, every ho- everything that he told me that he was going to do, he did. He had a track record with me. So when he told me he was going to get me a car when I turned when I was old enough to drive and had my driver's license, there was no doubt in my mind when I got my driver's license I was going to have a car. I didn't have to go beg him. He said it. I took him at his word, and it produced. But God's the same way. The scripture says if if if, if a natural father will give his child things. How much war would his heavenly father do? <laughs> it is saying, and he said that his heavenly father would do the same. It's just how much more will my will your heavenly father do? See, we we on earth we have some limitations on what we can do, and it and it doesn't matter how much money you have. You can be the poorest of poor. You can be middle class. You can be upper class. You can be filthy rich, but you can't outdo God. So whatever level that you are on, if you're giving your children gifts, the Bible says, how much more? 
will God do? And see, I trust God. Obedience must have faith to believe what it cannot see. Proverbs 3 and 5. There's trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Well, he's setting a standard here. He's telling you, no matter what, trust in me with all your heart. Stop leaning to what you can understand. And 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 I'll break it down this way. Stop believing everything that you see. See, we have this eyesight and we have these natural senses. And when we don't see something materializing at the rate we want it to materialize, then we go and we try to 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 make it come a little faster. That's what Abraham that's what Abraham did. God promised him and Sarah that he was going to give them a that they were going to have a child. Told them, you're going to be the father of many nations. You're going to be the mother of nations. You're going to have a son. When it didn't materialize at the rate they wanted it to materialize, Sarah said, take my handmaid. That didn't stop the promise of God for their lives. It certainly delayed it. Remember, God is not the author of confusion. He's not going to participate in your mess. (laughs) Either you're going to trust him or you're not. Either you're going to believe his word or you're not. So stop leaning to your own understanding. Stop taking matters into your own hands. Matthew 6.33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things that you have need of will be added unto you. Seek ye first. Stop putting these things first in first place ahead of God. Check with his off. Check with God first. Before you pull the string on buying that house, before you pull the string on buying that next car, run it past God. Run it past the Holy Spirit. Is this the right timing, Lord? Is this the right moment for this? Make sure God is in on it because if God is in on it, he will put his super on your natural and whatever it is that, you, that you're designed, now he can blow your mind and give you even more. That's what Solomon, he, he went to Solomon and he says, what, what can I do for you? What, what do you want? And Solomon said, Lord, give me wisdom, wisdom to govern your people. And God was so impressed with Solomon. He said, you could have asked for anything. And I, most of us would have been, all right, Lord, well, you know, I ain't never had, let me have, I want all the money I can have. I want a house over here, a house over there. That I, no, Solomon said, give me wisdom to govern your people. Do, when, when, you, when you get to the heart of God, When you get to God's heart, he will give you what's in his hand. And what's in his hand is better than anything the world can give you. Praise God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Now, you got to understand what these kingdoms are. You hear of the kingdom of God. You hear of the kingdom of heaven. Well, let me help you out. The kingdom of heaven is a place. It's where God resides. The kingdom of heaven is a place. That's where God resides. That's his permanent address. He lives in all of us. The kingdom of heaven is his permanent address. The kingdom of God is God's way of doing what he does. It's a government. It's a system. It's the order of God. And anything that is out of order is not of God. Again, God's not the author of confusion. The kingdom of God is a government. It's a system. It's God's way of doing what he does. Okay. I told you this was a teaching ministry. Let me give you scripture to back it up. Two places you can go. Second Samuel, you got your Bibles, your iPhones, (laughs) your tablets, 
All right, go to Second Samuel, verse I'm on chapter number twenty-two, and let's look at verse number thirty-one through thirty-three. Second Samuel, chapter number twenty-two, verse thirty-one to thirty-three, and I'm going to read it from the from the New King James Version here. Verse thirty-one reads, "As for God, His way." Let me read that again. As for God. His way is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. He is a shield to all who trust in him. For who is God except the Lord? And who is a rock except our God? God is my strength and power, and he makes my way perfect. Okay. All right. So you've heard people say, well, you ain't perfect. You ain't perfect. Ain't nobody perfect. And you're absolutely right. We're not. We're human beings. We're 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 fleshly beings, and this and this flesh is fallible. But watch this. When I take my will, and I take my way, and I put it into God's hand and subject it unto His will and His way, now the Bible says, and He makes my way perfect. <laughs> Obedience. When I subject, when I put my will under his will, and I put my ways under his ways, now he makes my way perfect. All right. It, it's so powerful that he put it in two places. Go over to Psalms chapter 18. Psalms chapter 18. All right. Psalms 18. And, and, and get over there to verse 30. Psalms 18. Verse 30, and here's what it says in Psalms. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. He is a shield to all who trust in him. For who is God except the Lord, and who is a rock except our God? It is God who arms me with strength and makes my way perfect. So here you have it in two scriptural references, Second Samuel 22, 31 through 33, and Psalms 18, 30, to 30 through 32. Now watch what happens when you submit your will to God's will. And let's take David for an example. Go over to 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 23. 1 Samuel chapter 23. 1 Samuel chapter 23. And we're and I'm going to read uh we're going to be reading verses 1 through 5. 1 Samuel 23 verses 1 through 5. Then they told David saying, "Look, the Philistines are fighting against Keilah, and they are robbing the threshing floors." Therefore, David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go and attack these Philistines? And the Lord said to David, Go and attack the Philistines and save Keilah. Verse 3. But David's men said to him, Ah, oh, here we go. There's always those naysayers. See, you, 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 <laughs> you can't get everybody involved in what God told you to do. There's that temptation, those distractions to, to, to pull you down. Watch what it says here. But David's men said to him, look, we are afraid here in Judah. How much more then if we go to Keilah against the armies of the Philistines? And David didn't even answer him. Answer them. Look what David did. Then David inquired of the Lord once again, and the Lord answered him and said, Arise, go down to Keilah, for I will deliver the Philistines into your hand. Verse 5, and David and his men went to Keilah and fought with the Philistines, struck them with a mighty blow, and took away their livestock. So David saved the inhabitants of Keilah. He didn't just go and do something without inquiring of the Lord first. That's, in, 
That's in, that's in 23 of 1 Samuel. David inquired of the Lord what he should do. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things that you have need of. Obedience must have faith to believe that which it cannot see. Even David's men said, look, we are afraid here in Judah. How much more than if, if we go down to Keilah, if we're afraid where we are, and we go down to this other place to fight, man, we're going to get destroyed against that mighty army of the Philistines. And David said, hold on. Lord, uh, is this your will for us? And the Lord said, God said unto him, arise. Arise. Get in the right posture. Get in the right frame of mind. Get in the right thinking. I've given you a word. That word is not going to return unto me void, but it shall accomplish the thing that I sent it to. <laughs> Get out of your own way. Once you receive a word from the Lord, a revelatory word, a revelatory word from the Lord, then act on it. The Bible says that God is not a man that he should lie. Calm yourself down, Pastor. God is not a man that he should lie, nor is he the son of man that he needs to repent. If he said it, then it's going to come to pass. If he said it, then it's going to come to pass. If he said it, all right, watch this. Since he said it, now this word if can change the sense. Since he said it, it has to come to pass. Since he said that with his stripes that we are healed, then it has to come to pass. So when did the healing take place? The healing took place long before you ever got sick. You had peace long before it was interrupted from the foundation of the world. When God created you and I, long before you ever came on the scene, you had healing. You had peace. You had joy. Long before you ever got here. How do we get it to manifest in our lives? By faith. We set our affections on God. We, we obey his word. We obey his commandments. We get in alignment with them, and then we stand on what we're in alignment for by faith, and then we watch that thing manifest in our lives. And too many people, and even believers in the body of Christ, they, they're going to believe it when they see it, and faith says, I believe it until I see it. The world says, I believe it when I see it. Faith says, I believe it until I see it. Hebrews 11 and 6, last scripture, and I'm, I'm closing right here. Obedience must have faith to believe what that which it cannot see. The Bible here in Hebrews 11 and 6 says, but without faith, and this is from the Amplified Version, but without faith it is impossible to walk with God and please him. For well, whoever comes near to God must necessarily believe that God exists and he rewards those who earnestly and di diligently seek him. But without faith, it's impossible to please God. If you're going to walk with God and you want to please God, you do it by faith. Your works is not going to please God. Your eloquence of speech is not going to please God. Your, your beautiful voice and how, how you can sing and move people with your, with your, with your voice, that's not going to please God. Your talents, your time and your treasure, it's not going to please God. Your faith is what's going to please God. And your obedience to his call on your life. Amen. Hey, listen, I, I, I am not out of time. 
I'm not out of time. I mean, I'm not out of word, but I, but I am out of time. I'm so excited I can't even talk straight. <laughs> I wanted to leave some time at the end for uh, Reverend Ray uh, to come back on and uh, have any, any words uh, uh, that he wanted to share uh, based on uh, the lesson that's been taught this evening. Uh, I don't want to leave him out. Um, he is a he is a wonderful, wonderful partner and a wonderful man in the body of Christ. And uh, I, I really I really appreciate the opportunity and very thankful for the opportunity that, that God has given me through uh, Reverend Ray uh, to be on this broadcast and to, and to bring the word of God. And, and, I, and my prayer is that that everyone that has heard this word and everyone that will hear this message uh, will have something they can take away from it that will better their lives. Amen. Reverend Ray. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Thank you, that brother. Thank you. Great word, awesome words, speaking about obedience and giving scripture to support everything. Now, this is a word that is needed. I'm glad that you made it. It's a series. I'm looking forward to 2024, to whatever that God has planned for you. Man, I, you know, you know, we can't really say the word went forth, you know. Um, I want to encourage those that have been listening to the broadcast to go ahead and share it, not for the likes or anything, but, but this is a, a time and a season that we need the word to come forth. We need the true sound doctrine of Christ to be preached all over throughout the world. You know, if we don't, but Jesus Christ is the Lord and Savior, um, listen to the word, you know, or read your Bible, you know, go to a Bible believing church, amen. And um, so when I, I don't really have a lot, man. I just like I'm just excited to have you on here, um, I'm preaching and, and teaching the Word of God. Yeah, that's a, that is so important Amen. in this day and time that we live in. So I'm going to give it back over to you. You can go ahead and um, finish um, everything up and close out in prayer. But yeah, man, I, I'm just sitting here listening. I got popcorn and chicken. <laughs> so <laughs> listen to the Word. Amen. Excited Amen. about God. Excited about what God is going to do, bro. That's it. Amen. Amen. God bless. Amen. Amen. Hey, God bless, brother. Yeah, it, you know, it's it's we're we're in a time, uh, uh, Reverend Ray, and, and and all of those that are listening that that it, it's it's vitally important. Hear what I'm saying? It's vitally important that you know the Word of God for yourself. That you have a relationship with God that's built on time spent with him and his word. Because there's word that's going forth in this land, and it sounds good, and it, it'll get you emotionally charged. But what happens when that word is gone? When When, when you don't have that, I'm telling you, you better know the word of God for yourself. You better put yourself, you, you, you need to hear me, dear heart. You need to put yourself in a place where you are walking and talking with God on a daily basis. I'm talking about an intimate relationship with his son, Jesus Christ a relationship where you don't have to make decisions by yourself, a relationship where you're not in fear and doubt. Yes, we, we all want to come across situations that we're not sure about and, 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 and there's going to be, you know, some knees knocking, you know, because uh, you, you, you're about to make a decision, you're about to pull the trigger on something, and, and man, you've heard, you've heard from God, but, but still, you know, Satan has his place. And he's in, he's talking to you in, in an ear, and he's telling you, but listen to me, dear heart. Everything that Satan says to you is a lie from the pit of hell. That's why God said trust him. If you're on this broadcast and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life, the Bible says, and Jesus said, if 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 you will confess him before man, he will confess you before his father. And if you will reject him before man, he will reject you before his father. And some will say, well, why would a loving God reject me? 
exactly what we've been talking about. Obedience. Submitting your will to his will. Submitting your way to his way. And so, if that's you, if you're not sure that your name will be found in the Lamb's Book of Life, I want to pray with you. I just simply want to pray with you. I want to pray the prayer of salvation with you. And it's simple. Romans chapter 10 and verse 9 of Romans says that if you confess with your with your mouth and believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, thou shalt be saved. But with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So just simply repeat after me. Father, I've got, I've, I've made some mistakes. I, I've sinned against you. And I repent. I repent of my sins. And I submit my will to your will. I submit my way to your way. I accept your son, Jesus Christ, whom you raised from the dead, as Lord and Savior of my life. Friends, we believe that if you said that prayer, that you are born again. Get into a, a Bible teaching church that will teach you the word of God in simplicity with understanding, whereby you can go back and open up the Bible and look at what the man of God has said and find what he said in the word of God. That's what the, that's what that, that's that's what the church of Berea did. The Bible says over there in, in Acts chapter seventeen, I believe it is, it says that the church of Berea was more noble than the church of Thessalonica. For one reason and one reason only. They heard the word of God that came from the man of God with all readiness of heart. Meaning they didn't throw stones at the man of God when they found something that he said that wasn't exactly accurate. But they went home and they opened the book up and they searched the scriptures to make sure that what he said was in the book. Because what he says, the Bible says this, let every man be a liar and let God be true. Let the word of God be true. So even with what I said on this evening, go search the scriptures and make sure that what I've said is in the book. <laughs> go make sure. Find out for yourself. Because there's a time coming where you're not going to have someone to teach you the word. You're going to have to know this for yourself. You're going to have to trust God for yourself. And you're going to have to believe and stand on his word. Amen. Thank you so much for, for listening into this broadcast. Uh, if you have any questions uh, 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 on the uh, screen, there, it has the, has the email address to Kingdom Principles. It also has the email address for When Christians Speak Talk Radio. Uh, Kingdom Principles is kingdomprinciples23 at gmail.com. If you have any questions or comments, please email me. Uh, let me know, and, and, I, and I'll show you that I will, I, I will answer your questions or I'll get back to you. All right? Thank you so very much. Uh, Father, we thank you for this time of presenting your word. We thank you for your word, Father. We thank you that everyone that has heard the word, that they will be doers of the word and not just hearers, Father. And, Father, we thank you, Father, for Brother Ray Rose, Father. We thank you for this this platform, this ministry. And, Lord, we pray that you will continue to elevate him, Father, that you will continue to, to draw people into him, Father, that you will continue to give him people of like precious faith to bring messages, to bring words, to partner with him in his ministry, Father. And, Daddy, we give you all praise, all glory, and all honor. We thank you that he's whole and healthy from the crown of his head to the very sole of his feet, Father. We thank you that no weapon formed against him shall prosper. And, Father, we... We thank you, Father, that every need of his is met, that he wants for nothing. We thank you for the peace that he walks in, Father, peace that surpasses all understanding, joy, unspeakable joy, full of your glory. And for that, we do give you all praise, glory, and honor. And it is in the name that's above every name, the name, Lord Jesus of Christ. Amen. Good night, everyone.
listening to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio, broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Today's voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. When Christians Speak is dedicated to lifting up the name of Christ Jesus and spreading the good news. So it's my brother, can you spare a dime? 